Hello, welcome to Friday Night Shooters. I'm your host, Peter Rear. Today we're doing a Once Upon a Time Rise of the Dark Swan. If any of you guys ever actually watch Once Upon a Time, you know who Emma Swan is, and hence why she becomes the Dark Swan, because there's always, pretty much anybody, there's always a possibility of them turning evil. You always have a yin and a yang, a good and an evil, within everybody. Even the nicest, perfect people you've ever seen, there's always going to be some type of evil. But I figure which side of them actually overpowers the other, but there's always going to be that aspect there. Well, the one thing with Emma Swan is, even though a lot of her evil was put into another person, which was Maleficent's daughter, she still had an ability of evil because it was prophesized. Even though she was a savior, it was still prophesized that she will turn evil and bring an end to things. So the one thing also about the uh, with Rumble Stillskin, Mr. Gold, is the Dark One. The Dark One must have a vessel. If the Dark One is able to just go free, it just basically make end of times, end of the world. So that vessel has to be somebody who's able to withstand the power of the Dark One. So the Dark One actually enters into Emma Swan, which in turn creates the Dark Swan. Or Black Swan, everyone want to think about it. Because in a sense, it's kind of still the Black Swan. So she has the potential for evil. She becomes evil. And we'll see what happens. I didn't exactly watch the new episode. I'm curious about it because I didn't see exactly what happens. But I know basically what's going to happen just from the ending of the last season. We just see how it enters within her. But then it just kind of ends. It's done. But she has the potential for evil because she basically killed the Corella. If you think about it, you watch it, you'll see. But it's definitely going to be an interesting turn of events. I can't wait to see the episode. I'm probably going to watch it since I've done this video because I really miss it. I've been They had the review or the premiere yesterday. Today's actually Monday, but they had it yesterday. I missed it, but obviously it's not releasing on Monday. This is a different day because I recorded in advance. So I'm doing two weeks in advance, so this is actually a couple weeks ago. So by now, you probably watched two episodes. Not me. I'm still missing an episode. Oh, we'll find out. But the whole idea, the Once Upon a Time, the Rise of the Dark Swan, is you have the Rise of the Dark Swan. And the concept behind this cocktail is that Rise. Because you're going to have the Emma Swan within the outer part of the cocktail, which is the Chaser. Because she has the powers... And then there's always something within her mind that's going to make her evil. So we're using some hypnotic with that. But the idea with that is you're also going to have within the chaser the darkness. Darkness being the black vodka. So obviously it's going to be dark. So it has some black vodka with that. Then you also have the black heart. Because there's always going to be a bit of darkness within her heart. And you're going to take that darkness, release it into the shooter... And then take the shot. Hence, making the rise of the Dark Swan. It's a very simple cocktail. It has the inverted bomb shot. It's a really good concept. If you ever had an inverted bomb shot, it's just a simple cocktail. But it has so many implications as far as if you want to make a theme cocktail. Because you figure you're releasing something into another. You're creating, you're taking one cocktail, adding another cocktail within that. You're making something completely new. You had that transformation, the elevation, and the ascension into something else. So it's so many possibilities for a storyline. It's a great idea for a cocktail. It's simple. I can't wait to watch the episode. But this is the Once Upon a Time Rise of the Dark Swan cocktail. Well, shooter in this case. I'll show you exactly how it's done. First thing you want to do is you want to create the shot. But to create the shot, you're going to take an ounce or well, half ounce of your black vodka because one thing about black vodka is pretty damn dark so definitely going to add a lot of darkness to this so we're adding a half ounce of that and then you want to take an ounce of your black heart
still got a little leftover, so. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Here's the thing about uh, Blackheart. 93 proof. That's a burn. Yeah, I'll grow some hair in the chest at the end. Yeah. But to make the cocktail, what you want to do is you want to take the shot... I can still feel the burn from that. That's like right here. You feel it. And you want to take your glass, invert it, apply pressure, and then release. There you go. Now to create the actual cocktail for the chaser, you want to take a half ounce of your hypnotic. Put that on the side of the glass. Take an ounce of orange vodka. Then you want to take three ounces of Sprite. You may not exactly have three. If not, I got another one waiting for it. Maybe I probably do. Eh, just under. There you have it. From once upon a time, Rise of the Dark Swan Shooter, in this case. It's an inverted bomb shot. So this is gonna have a lot of different flavor notes. Because you have the power, the fight, the constant struggle over the mind and the darkness within. Because you're getting the hypnotic in there, so you got a lot of flavors from the hypnotic. You got a lot of potency coming from the black heart rum and a lot of sweetness coming from the black vodka because even though it's still vodka it definitely has some sweetness to it because it's more of a berry flavor to it you also add in a lot of citrus elements because you got the orange vodka the sprite helps kind of bring it all together so flavor wise it definitely could be interesting but it's going to have some potency to it but that is the rise of the dark swan all right let's try it out Pretty cool. Wow. That's definitely potent. But flavor wise, it's actually really good. You get a lot of that sweet berry elements you're getting from the the black vodka, you're getting a lot of different fruit elements coming from the hypnotic. It's such an array of flavor. It just all hits you at once, but it's actually really good. And it definitely has the effect because you have the darkness that lies within that releases, creates the dark swan. So story-wise, this is actually really good in that aspect. Flavor-wise, it's also really good because you get a lot of berry, tropical fruit flavor with a little bit of tartness you're getting from the hypnotic. It's a slight bit of dryness from it. We got a lot of citrus elements at the end. It definitely has some potency because you're getting a lot from that, that black heart rum and then the orange vodka. Because I believe the orange vodka is not much less than 40%. Yeah, it's about 35% because you figure adding the orange to it so it brings down just a little. But it's still pretty potent at 35%. I think if not, it's like maybe 12. Eh, 17%. So you figure you're not really getting a lot of alcohol coming from that. And this is about 25. So it doesn't say. Yeah, 20%. So you're not getting much from this, not much from that, but you're getting a lot more from this as far as alcohol-wise. But you're also getting a lot of citrus elements, a lot of flavor coming from that one shot. 
But it's definitely something that can hit you in the end. But it has so much flavor. But it's just a story element in itself. It is the Rise of the Dark Swan. Definitely. If you guys watch the series. Let me know what you guys think. If you watch the episode that this premiere from last week. Because I believe by the time this actually premieres. You figure it's already been a couple episodes in. So let me know what you think of the first episode of the season. And the new episode from the season. Definitely give me your inputs on it. Because I love the series. I watch every single episode. It's a very good idea that they're using with the different concepts. With the different story characters that you're getting from like Disney and all that. Because this is kind of a Disney based series. But it's given more of a dark element to it. But it's kind of twisting everything around to get, make it more believable, I guess you could say. Basically how all these different characters intertwine. Because if you actually ever watch the original stories from these, Rumble Simpson is only in the one series. He's not in many different series. The Evil Queen, she's only in Sleeping Beauty. She's not in a ton of different ideas. But figure with Once Upon a Time, they're taking a character... And they're spanning them across many different stories, bringing a lot more of a character idea and a lot more of a concept, which is a continuing storyline, which could take the idea of Once Upon a Time in a story and make multiple episodes off of it. So it's a great idea to do in Once Upon a Time. I love the series. This is the fourth series, I believe. can't remember exactly, because you figure... The last one was with the uh, Snow Queen, so it's a little bit different. So, it's definitely something worth checking out. Let me know what you guys think. But let me know what you think of the cocktail idea. If you have different ideas you want to make for Once Upon a Time, I got plenty of different cocktails I made in the past. I believe all my show on the show, if not on the show, they've been on Facebook, but they've been different, different ways. But let me know what you guys think. Be sure to like us on Facebook, House of Spirit Cocktails, subscribe to our channel, submit your cocktails below. Ideas for a Once Upon a Time cocktail? Submit it below. You'll see the vid the link at the end of the video also. Definitely send them. I love to create your different ideas. But let me know what you guys think. But as always, drink responsibly.